So in the second clip about uh, Bonnie Kate, let's look at some of the variations uh, of the kind used by Michael Coleman. Now, I'm not going to re reproduce them exactly, I'm not going to stick exactly to the way Coleman played, but like most people who tackle this tune these days, uh, play some variations which are either very similar to or inspired by the kind of thing that Michael Coleman does on his classic recording, which I linked you to in the uh, in the first clip in this series. Okay, let's have a look. Now in the first part of the tune, the sort of bog standard way that I showed you in the first clip was this. Now Michael Coleman seems to find this pretty dull because after he's played the first time the tune through once, he never goes back to that actually. But um, it's a case of mixing up four or five different uh, variations. Uh, to replace that little theme there. So let's have a look. The first one that he uses quite a lot is to do a kind of repeated rolling or trebling figure on the F sharp. So just to replace So I'm not using rolls there, I'm not uh, doing a classic box player's roll, which would be something like... You can do that if you like. I don't like it much because of the out of key grace note, but uh, that would be something like this. I tend to do other things, staying on the row, and the easiest way to play it would be just to play three Fs. And note that you can vary the uh, leading notes. Okay, so just play it three, or three times with the one finger, or alternate fingers, which is what I tend to do. Or throw in a grace note. If you want to see how I do that in more detail, you can look for my clip about alternatives to the five-note roll. You could also do something like this, trebles. So anyway, work out whichever way you're going to play it. If you just do three, uh, three Fs, it's fine. And then it continues. Like that. So that's the first of the uh, variations, and he uses that quite a lot. He comes back to it. The second variation would be a kind of cascading, cascading triplet figure, which would be composed of these notes. But that's very difficult to pull off on the box, especially the first one. 
that's be because of the change of bellows direction. The other thing to bear in mind is that, and I'll try and illustrate this with the clip on the fiddle, when you play a sequence like up on the fiddle, it ends up not sounding like three trip two triplets, diddle di diddle di. It sounds more like tliada tliada. It sounds like cuts more than triplets. And I'll try and show that on the fiddle. So just to try and show you uh, what I mean about the way we played on the fiddle, this passage, um, you might see the notes written in a score, like like triplets, like this. But uh, as you play them and as it gets faster, they tend to morph into something else. They're almost like cuts. So at speed it gives you something like this. So that's what I want to show you in the way I substitute different ways of playing that on the box. And the way I would suggest we do this on the box would be, in fact, not to play the first note of D, but to use a, a, a grace the C sharp, like that. So, you know, our grace note is an E rather than a D, we can't help that, but the effect is more similar, in my mind, to what the fiddle is playing. If we use the outer row of sharp, makes it easy to grace, to cut with the G here. If you have a one row box or if you really want the D you could do it in a slightly simpler like this with cuts. Variation number three would be cascading triplets, but of a different kind. Instead of descending triplets, they're like... Um See that I need a bit of work on mine to make them really fluid at speed, but the fingering technique you use is very useful. So always grace with your ring finger. Now, first finger coming down again, grace with the index finger with the ring finger, sorry, and then replace with the middle. Variation number number three and number four would be uh, something like this. And that really is to finish off the phrase. To finish off the path, I should say. So you might do that, maybe you follow one of the triplet runs with that. And make it rather, you know, rather final sounding. So 
So there we have four variations on the main theme, so that gives you five things to choose with in total, and you can mix them up. This obviously makes it hard to play this tune in a group, because if everybody's mixing up things at different times, either you have to follow somebody, or you play it as a solo piece, or you just practice it in your bedroom for a few years, and um, you'll pull it out and surprise people at some point. All right, so that will deal with variations for the first part. Now let's move on to the second part. Now you'll remember from the first video that um, was the way I showed you a simplified basic version of the tune, the second part. And there's lots of different things you can do with that. Michael Coleman actually often does a grace on the... Holds the G and rolls it door. Now, he does that in the first time through the tune. The second time through the tune, he ditches that way of playing the, the second part altogether. And he moves on to something like this. Actually, what he does is... Maybe the endings aren't quite the same, but this... This is very easy to do on the fiddle, uh, and it's not that hard to do on the box either. So I'm doing trebles or triplets on the on the repeated D. So A to D, B, I'm doing these with a 3 2 1. You could do them with uh, 1 and 2, I guess. Whatever suits you. Or you can, if the trebles are too difficult, or if you like the, if you don't like the um, staccato sound that you get, you could just play 3 Ds. Or you could do a sort of more conventional half roll, or even a full roll, I suppose, which I don't care for, so I'm not going to even try that, but... So that's the way Coleman plays it. But um, you'll hear a lot of fiddle players throwing in a slightly more complicated variation. It's more complicated melodically, but it actually might be easier to execute because you don't have to do uh, three trebles. Uh, like that. So it might be slightly easier, but it also, I think, it's slightly more interesting melodically. And then uh, I couldn't resist throwing in something. The only person I've heard doing this is Kevin Burke on his uh, Folkways, I think, or the, the record he made in America anyway, before he was famous. Um, that green record where he's sitting in the photo of him, sitting in the cab of an old truck that he found in a scrapyard somewhere, no doubt. And he gives us a little, uh, the kind of thing you hear people do in the Mason's apron sometimes. He suddenly drops down a tone, so... So there, uh, wherever this is around a D figure with A and D. This is the C natural. So that 
that's just a little wink and a nod, if you like, to surprise people. Uh, so those are some of the uh, some variations on the variations of Michael Coleman that I hope you'll have fun with. Thanks for watching.